Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me today. In today's video, we are going to talk about watercolors. And this is an intro course for first time and beginner painters uh, wanting to try watercolors. So what you're going to see in the description box below, there's a link to a supply kit. And those are just generally recommended supplies um, that I recommend for watercolors. If you already have watercolors at home, please utilize the tools that you have so you don't have to purchase new stuff um, until you're ready or until you want to. Um, but utilize what you have at home. Another thing that you're gonna see in the description box below is a link to what I call a traceable. And a traceable is a way for my uh, first time painters to transfer the image onto your canvas or onto your paper before you start painting. And um, it's just a nice way so you can focus more on painting and less on drawing. Though I do recommend that you practice your drawing skills, it just helps you get better. So check out uh, the link to the traceable and there's also going to be a video on how to transfer your traceable to your paper. So check out both of those. And like I said before, this is an intro course to watercolors and the only way that you get better is with more practice. So please practice, paint this multiple times. You will find that with watercolors, you can paint the exact same image four or five times and each one of your paintings is gonna be a little bit different and you're gonna learn something from each one of those. So watercolor paper is not expensive, as expensive as uh, canvas. So you can actually go through a little bit more with the watercolor paper. So please practice, practice, practice. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump into, into today's subject matter. All right, guys, this is gonna be a fun watercolor painting. So grab all your supplies, and these are the general colors that I'll be using today. Uh, feel free to adjust. And as always, make sure you take your progress photos. Now, after you've transferred your traceable to your surface, uh, we're gonna actually start with water. And we're gonna load up the water from the edges of that traceable line and being rather generous with that amount of water. And you, be, you don't want your water to go on the inside of your calla lily. So you want this on the outside. So where we add our pigment, wherever the water is, the pigment has the ability to go there. So we don't want any of this color inside of our calla lily. And I know super, all right. So we're gonna be using a color combo of light green and black. So on my palette, it's an Arteza um, 36 watercolor palette. It already has kind of a sappy green color, so that's what I'll be using. So if you have that on your palette, use that. If you have a very simple color choice palette, take your light green and add a touch of black to it and you can get to kind of this sappy moss green. Now, when you're applying your pigment to this water, this is a wet on wet application, the first place that you put your pigment is gonna be your darkest color and your highest saturation. This is the purest pigment. And as you make more brush strokes, the color is gonna get lighter and lighter and lighter. So when you're working with watercolors, you're really kind of focusing on your saturation of your color. And it's always best to kind of less is more so start off with a small amount of pigment and you can always add more with watercolors. And again, here you can see that I'm taking that direct color and putting it right on the perimeter of that calla lily and then even just kind of diffusing it a little bit and blending it in with the water. With watercolors, there is a certain amount of control that you can achieve, but there's also a certain amount of just kind of playing with the elements. So enjoy the process. And here you can see I went and grabbed some blue and it was a bit of a darker blue on my palette. And we're applying it directly into that green mixture and they'll mix kind of together. And again, this is one of the fun parts of watercolor painting, just watching the colors mix. So enjoy, slow down, take a deep breath and just kind of enjoy this process of watching it immediately change uh, before, your, uh, before your eyes. And this is one of the fun aspects of watercolor painting. 
So you'll also see that I kind of hold the brush in different directions, kind of at an angle. Sometimes I use just the tip of the brush. So with watercolor uh, painting, you're gonna learn um, different amounts of water give different effects, different dryness of your brush will give different effects. And the more that you practice your watercolors, um, the more you're gonna internalize those concepts and naturally go about creating what you want. So don't be afraid to paint multiple times the same subject matter in watercolors. So here, we're actually doing the same thing that we did in the background. We're applying a lot of water. And I do recommend that you let your background dry before you move into this step. So we're putting that water on there. Um, again, rather generous. And we're gonna take a light gray and start to do some um, little bit of shadow on our white calla lily. And again, for this, less is more. And with watercolor, the more water you add, the lighter the color is gonna be. The more pure pigment that you use, the darker the color is gonna be. So as you're in these beginning stages, just kind of remember that and play. And again, less is more, so start out light. You can always add more. And if you feel like you need to switch brushes, go down to a smaller brush, go right ahead. I do tend to stick with the same brush. Um, and here you can see where I went and grabbed some of the direct black from the tray and started to apply it to the canvas. And it changes based on if I have that medium gray right there or applying on top of it, or if it's kind of already um, just the water and the blank area. So again, just you are strengthening your power of observation as you create anything, but especially when you're creating watercolors, you're learning how things are working together. So just a moment ago, you can see that I added a little bit of green to um, the gray mixture that I was using. And again, a tiny amount of green, so just a little hint of it. Now we're grabbing some yellow. I did clean the brush before grabbing the yellow. Um, and we're filling in that center. And then again, we're placing this yellow in a few specific areas. So I want you to just observe where I'm placing this yellow and mimic that on your canvas to the best of your ability. Yours will be different. Um, than mine and like I said earlier I want you to practice this a couple of times so here you can see that I applied the yellow and then with um, no pigment on the brush I'm going back and just kind of playing and diffusing the pigment into that wet base again this will get more comfortable with more practice now going back to more of a medium gray or a darker gray and that's just grabbing more black with water on the brush going around the center um, of the calla lily and again just go slow you don't want to do this super fast you kind of want to work on your brush control and the placement and watch the pigment kind of bleed into the water bleed mix into the other colors and notice just how things um, change and how the colors mix uh, based on how wet the paper is how wet the application of what you're applying to the paper is Again, there's quite a few variables and you just get more comfortable with practice. I can't, I can't say that enough. So, and watercolor supplies aren't as expensive as acrylic supplies. So you can, you do have the option that you can paint this multiple times. So again, just going in with a little bit more of the darker gray um, and a little more control in these tiny areas. And if you need to use that smaller pointy brush, go right ahead and switch it up. All right, you're doing a great job. I'm really proud of you. And with this video or any video, feel free to switch out colors. If you would prefer a purple background or red, um, do this again and switch up your colors. So now I'm using a long liner brush. Sometimes it's called a rigger brush, um, but I don't know if you could fully tell when I brought the brush into the frame, but the bristles are about three inches long. So you get, you definitely get a lot of practice with your brush control. And we're basically outlining the calla lily. So you can reference the traceable for the exact lines you'll be doing. In some of the other videos on my channel, you'll notice that I do this with a brush pin on some of the other watercolor videos. Either option works just fine. And if you even wanna switch up colors, if you wanna do this in red or purple, you don't have to do it with the black. And as we're doing this with the brush and the watercolor pigment, you'll notice that I um, 
kind of put a little bit of water on the brush I'll grab from that palette, but that's there's a lot of pigment in that little bit of water on the palette when I'm grabbing it with the brush. So as we're doing this, you want more pure pigment, and that's gonna be your darker saturation um, compared to more of a watered down that we were applying for the light gray in the middle of the calla lily. All right, you're doing good. And if this is your first time painting, be kind to yourself. It takes a lot of courage to do this at home. Um, so I'm really proud of you and you should be proud of yourself. Hopefully this is not the first um, or not the last painting that you'll be completing. All right, and you have noticed that the pause the video and take your progress photos pop up quite a bit here. Um, it's important that you document your creative process. It's nice to kind of go back and look at those pictures later on when you have a better understanding of what you're doing. So here you can see I went back to a smaller brush and a green and black mixture. And I kind of let the paper dry just a little bit, not too much. So it's still kind of wet and bleeding a little bit as I'm adding this watercolor compared to dry paper that would absorb it a little bit more. And we're just kind of um, laying this green and black mixture in very specific areas, trying to go a little bit darker as this calla lily kind of spirals in and where it's the darkest shadow where it kind of spirals in on itself. Um, we're just applying that in layers. And as you get into more and more uh, painting and creative outlets, remember to look at your painting from a distance of five to 10 feet away. This is the normal viewing distance for most things in life and especially artwork. So learning to look at your artwork from that distance while you're creating it and making adjustments as needed will just help um, continue your creative efforts. All right, so clean the brush. We're gonna go over to purple paint. And again, just kind of putting this in the shadow. Um, purple is actually the complement, the contrasting color to yellow. So I actually like to incorporate that into my artwork to where the highlight is that yellow we added earlier and then putting the purple in the shadow. And as you get more and more into your creative exploration, um, dive into learning about the color wheel, learning about complementing colors, learn about your composition, push yourself to continue um, learning and understanding about creativity. All right, so now you can see that we moved over to blue paint and kind of a medium blue. Um, there's a good amount of water um, that we're applying so that way we have some transparency to be able to see some of the greens and the blacks underneath. And again, if you wanna switch out colors, if you prefer to do this with purple or teal or even orange, uh, go right ahead. No matter what you do, please send me pictures of what you paint. Um, they encourage me a lot to continue to make these videos. And when I share them on social media, it encourages other people to give painting a try for the first time. So you guys are uh, very instrumental in helping this channel grow and spreading the word and getting people exposed to the creative, uh, creative process and hopefully they can find the therapeutic aspects of it for their life. So if you ever, um, as you're doing this, if the color, the background color starts to overlap an area you don't want it to, like it did on the tip of that calla lily, um, take a uh, dry brush, kind of a new dry brush, and you can uh, kind of, I guess, relief watercolor. When you move the dry brush on top of the area that you didn't want the watercolor to go, the bristles absorb it. You can use a paper towel for the same concept as well. All right, so here you can see we're using raw sienna, and we're gonna put this in a few specific areas on top of the yellow. And this just gives that yellow um, a bit of a shadow, and this raw sienna is kind of an earthy, uh, yellow, so it's a nice shadow element with the greens and the blues in here. And again, just using the tip of the brush to apply it in a few very specific areas. And all I want you to do is observe the general place where I put it and mimic that on your canvas. Your brain's taking in a lot of information during the painting process. So great job, guys. Thanks so much for painting. Please paint again, paint this one again. Keep on getting creative. Until next time, cheers. 
Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the watercolor process and I hope you like how your paintings turned out. Like I said in the intro, please paint this multiple times. Each one's going to be a little bit different, but each time you paint, you're gaining more knowledge and your muscles are remembering um, how to hold the brush, what it looks like to mix colors, um, how to kind of play with the water. So please uh, just keep on practicing. With that being said, anything that you upload to social media, please tag me at Paint with Lovejoy or hashtag Paint with Lovejoy, or um, at the very least, please email me your photos of what you paint. Um, when I post those on social media, uh, it encourages other people to paint, and they're some of my favorite emails to receive um, uh, in the morning when I'm drinking my coffee. So let me know how you're doing. Uh, also, please leave suggestions on what you want me to create in the future. Um, I am a solo show, so it's not like I can get them done super quickly, but I do have a nice running list with some awesome subject matters that you guys have recommended, so let's keep that going. Anything else, please let me know what you're looking for in the future, and I'll do my best to kind of incorporate that. Uh, but this has been a great project, the Paint with Lovejoy website. It has grown beautifully thanks to your support. So until next time, have a great day and happy painting. Cheers.